Hi there guys, I'm Nigel from Notion Hub and in this video, I'll be showing you the most important tips and tricks for your Moto G32. By the way, I'll also be making a dedicated video for the best features where I'll talk about all the features offered by this phone. So definitely check out that video as well, link will be in the description. With that said, first I'll start off with the navigation gestures. Now this phone by default comes with a 3 button navigation bar but we can change it to the navigation gestures. Once you enable it, you can swipe from the bottom of the screen to go home, swipe and hold for recent apps. To go back, you can swipe from the left side corner or the right corner to go back a step. To trigger Google Assistant, you can swipe from the bottom left corner or bottom right corner diagonally and it will trigger Google Assistant. Finally, we can also swipe left or right on the bottom bar to quickly switch between the recent applications. So these are the navigation gestures, they work really well and I would definitely recommend them over the regular 3 button navigation bar. Next, I'm going to show you how to open split screen mode. For that, first we need to go to the recent apps page and then click on the app icon and then select split screen. Once you do that, that application will open up in the top window and we can select the secondary application from recent apps or the app drawer. Now, this is something that you can find on all of the phones, but on this phone, we also have a nice gesture. You can enable the toggle from here. Now, once you enable this feature, you can just swipe from the left edge of the screen to the right and back to open the current application in split screen mode. And then you can select the secondary application from the app drawer. Now, even though most of the applications support split screen mode, there are still some applications that might not support this feature. So to fix that, first we need to enable developer options. For that, go to settings, about page, and then click on the build number seven times. Once you do that, developer options will be enabled. Now go to the developer options, scroll all the way to the bottom and enable force activities to be resizable and then restart your phone. Once you do that, you will be able to use all applications in split screen mode. Next, I'm gonna show you how to take screenshots. Now the default way is to use the buttons. Just long press the volume down button and the power button both at the same time to take a screenshot. On this phone, we also have the three finger screenshot gesture. So to use that, you just need to enable this toggle. And once you're done, just touch and hold the screen with three fingers at the same time to take a screenshot. Once you get a screenshot, you'll see a preview and some extra options to edit the screenshot, share it, or even do a direct Google image search, which is a pretty cool feature. Next, we can also record the screen on this phone. You can do it directly from the notification toggles. If you long press the record toggle, you can also change the settings for this screen recording feature. Next, I'm going to show you how to change the default applications like the default phone dialer, SMS application or your browser. You just need to come to this place and from here, we can change our default SMS application, browser or even your home launcher. Next, if you want to display the battery percentage on the status bar, you just need to enable this toggle. Once you're done, you can see the battery percentage on the status bar. Next, this one also has dark theme and you can enable it directly from the display settings or the notification toggles. You can just touch it and all the system UI elements change to the dark theme. Even some stock applications like phone dialer, SMS application, and even some Google applications like YouTube, Gmail, all change to the dark theme. From settings, you can also configure the dark theme to turn on at a specific time and turn off at a specific time as well. Next, we have a lot of cool gestures on this phone. First, we have open camera quickly. Now, once you enable this feature, you can just double press the power button to quickly open the camera application. This gesture works anywhere, anytime. Next, we have fast torch. Once you enable this feature, you can just do a chopping gesture to turn on the flash and do the chopping gesture again to turn off the flash. This is a pretty handy gesture. Next, we have quick capture. Once you enable this feature, you can just twist your phone to open the camera application. Once the camera application is open, you can again twist your phone to switch between the front camera and the rear camera. Once again, this gesture works anywhere, anytime. Next, we have pick to silence. Once you enable this feature, whenever you get a call, you can just pick up the phone to silence the ringtone. Next, we have media controls. Now, once you enable this feature, whenever the display is off, you can long press the volume up button to change to the next song. And you can also long press the volume down button to change to the previous song. These are pretty handy media controls, especially if you listen to a lot of music. Next, we have 
Peak Display. You can enable it directly from the display settings or the Moto app. And once you enable this feature, whenever your phone is locked, if you get a notification, you get to see it on the display. From here, you can have some brief information about your phone, like the time, battery percentage, all the notifications, and you can also interact with those notifications. Peak Display is a pretty unique feature that you can find only on this phone, and I would definitely recommend you to try it out. Next, this phone also has Dolby Atmos. It's enabled by default for the speaker and for headset, you can turn it on or turn it off. We have different categories and you get different audio experience for different categories. Going on next, we can also create our own theme on this phone. Once again, we can do it directly from the Moto apps personalization section. From here, we can choose our own favorite font, change the accent colors, choose icon shape, and even the layout of the home screen. If you really want to personalize your phone, you can give it a try. Next, we have Nearby Share. Now, this is a new feature that you can find in almost all the Android phones. And using this feature, we can share any kind of information between Android phones. Whether it's simple text or files, you just need to enable Nearby Share on both phones, select Share, and you can find the opposite party in the share list. It's a pretty cool feature. It works exactly like Share It, where you can transfer files or Wi-Fi, but without any ads or any kind of disturbance. So guys, these are all the most important tips and tricks that you should know about your phone. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video. With that said, this is Nikhil signing off. See you in my next video.